Speaker. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to serve you, Mr. Rosendale. Uh, I am grateful for the Scottish Affairs Committee uh, for their work on this most important subject. In Scotland, we usually associate depopulation with rural areas that struggle to create jobs and retain young people in their communities. Areas such as the Highlands and Islands, Argyll and Butte, do indeed contend with depopulation, have done so for hundreds of years. However, that is, what is less recognised is that my constituency of Inverclyde, just 40 minutes from the city centre of Scotland's largest city, has some of the highest rates of depopulation in Scotland. A report from Inverclyde Council concluded that Inverclyde's rate of depopulation was proportionally higher than any local authority in the United Kingdom between 1981 and 2009. Over the same period, the number of young people in Inverclyde aged under 24 has fallen by 42%, almost double the rate of decline that we have seen across Scotland as a whole. Since 1951, Inverclyde's population has shrunk by more than 57,000 people and is projected to decline for at least 20 more years. There are no easy or simple solutions to this problem, but if we are to see Scotland and Inverclyde reach their full economic potential, then we need people. To help grow those people, we need a favourable immigration policy which addresses our specific circumstances. The UK Government told us that they are delivering an immigration system which works for the national interest and is fair to British citizens. Unfortunately, this is simply not a realistic appraisal of the effects of UK immigration policy. Whether it's spousal work or post-study work visas, our immigration system does not work in the interest of Scotland or my constituency. The UK Government has also said uncontrolled mass immigration also makes it difficult to maintain social cohesion, puts pressure on public services and can drive down wages for people on low incomes. I can assure the Minister that I am more concerned about uncontrolled emigration and its effects on social cohesion, our ability to maintain social services and the way in which it stifles investments and employment opportunities. In fact, over the years, the immigrants who have chosen to live in Inverclyde have contributed far more to our community than they have taken out of it. The UK Government's lack of understanding for our situation derives from their interpretation of the national interest, to mean the interest of the south-east of England. There are a range of needs across UK nations, and my constituency is not well served by an immigration policy tailored for our population pressures in the south-east of England. It is therefore disappointing that the UK Government refuses to budge on the issue of post-study work visas, especially as there is overwhelming support for them to be reintroduced in Scotland. In the words of Liz Cameron, Chief Executive of the Scottish Chamber of Commerce, it simply beggars belief that the UK Government is closing the door on an opportunity for talented international people to contribute to our economy. Well yeah, sure. I'm grateful to Warren Buffett for giving way because um, I might want to try, draw his attention to our, our very fine population demography um, report, which reports that Inverclyde is absolutely the second bottom for immigration when it comes to these issues. It minus 12% in terms of the, 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 Scot the Scottish average. So I think my, my, my honourable friend is on to a very, very important point here, that the, the rest of Scotland, and there are variations, regional variations in Scotland, is way behind the rest of England when it comes to these things. And I support him in saying that we need to ensure that we have these people coming to areas like his. <coughs> I thank my honourable colleague for time and intervention and highlighting the, the point I was making. The inevitable result of the UK government's irrational commitment to reducing non-EEA migration is a Scotland which is less attractive for international students. The millions of pounds that these students contribute to our higher education sector will be under threat, and we will see a reduction in the influence and soft power we currently exert throughout the world. The frustrating aspect of this self-destructive policy is that it is entirely unnecessary and avoidable. We need only look to Canada, where regionally tailored visas are resulting in a more even distribution of migrants if Canada and other countries can introduce regional variations in immigration policy, then there is no reason why the UK can't do likewise. The UK government says the introduction of such scheme would overcomplicate our immigration system. As the Minister is aware, as touched on previously, Scotland previously introduced the Fresh Talent Initiative, which allowed the Scottish Parliament, in partnership with the Home Office, to create a tailored policy to combat depopulation. The Fresh Talent Initiative was not perfect, not that it solve all of Scotland's problems. 
But the fact that it, it existed at all is proof of the UK government's ability to introduce regional variations in our immigration policy, if there is a political will to do so. I do not agree that there are insurmountable practical barriers in implementing such a policy. If the UK government will not listen to Scotland's elected representatives, perhaps they will listen to the experts in Scotland's higher education sector. Universities Scotland said that the UK has one of the least competitive policies on post-study work in the English-speaking world. The University of Edinburgh warned that the removal of the post-study work visa was a damaging change which would lead to a brain drain of highly skilled global talent from Scotland. The principals of Glasgow, Aberdeen and Robert Gordon University have also voiced their concerns and have called to the reintroduction of the post-study work visa in Scotland. If the UK government is intent on maintaining its current policy, then it cannot claim that it truly represents all of the UK's nations. The Scottish higher education sector and Scotland's elected representatives have made it very clear. Scotland wants the post-study work visa to be reinstated. It's not too late for the government to make this positive change.